In Finland, in the mid-1920s, there was an apocalyptic cult which committed violence, especially against children. Kartanoism, or kartanolaisuus in Finnish, was an apocalyptic cult running in Huittinen. The sect operated within the Evangelical Lutheran Church, but they had their own rules. The sect was born in the mid-1920s and operated until the 50s. The cult members, which were called Kartanolainen in Finnish, waited for the end of the world and it was believed to occur before between 1943 and 1944, and again in 1955. After these dates surpassed, it was noted that the Lord was gracious and gave his shepherds more time to prepare for the end of the world. The word Kartanolaisuus is derived from the surname of Alma Kartano, the founder of the sect. Alma Kartano was born 10th of August in 1885 in Huittinen. Alma's father was called Karle Evert Vilman and he was a farm worker. And her mother was called Kaisa Lisa Matintytär. Initially, the family's last name was Vilman, but it was changed to Takakartano after their home. In Finland, it was customary to take the residential names as aliases and surnames. It was intended to show outsiders who owned the property. Later, the surname Takakartano was shortened to Kartano. Alma had three siblings, one of whom was her twin sister. Because the family lived in poverty, Alma had to go to be a servant at the age of 10. Alma's mother was a believer and she had given her children a religious upbringing. At the beginning of the 20th century, an evangelist arrived in Huittinen in search of people to take to a missionary journey. The man made a great impression to Alma and she decided to go with him. The preaching tour lasted more than a year and they traveled along the Karelia, Ingria and Russia. At the time it was believed that Kartano had become familiar with two Russian sects, Skopje and Kajists. It is believed that Alma got influences from these two to her own cult. Skopce were a religious group in Russia known especially for the castration of men, i.e. the removal of the testicles and penis, and for women the removal of breasts. They believed that halves of the forbidden fruit given to Adam and Eve formed in the testicles and breasts. According to the cult, the evil of the world is rooted in the bodily beauty and sexuality which blurs the connection to the god. When the genitals were castrated, sexual desires were believed to go away. Kayists, on the other hand, were a cult that began in the 17th century and its teachings were based on the Orthodox Church. They did not drink or get married, but often they met at night in isolation from others, sang hymns and danced to exhaustion. This is how they believed they could connect with God. However, this caused a rumor mill that the members came together only to participate in orgies. The sect avoided eating meat because it was believed to be the product of copulation and how allegedly the potatoes were the real forbidden fruit with which Eve seduced Adam. It is believed that Alma Kartano was influenced by these Russian sects, especially in relation to sexuality. There is a clear connection between Kartano and these aforementioned sects. Lust and sexuality were completely forbidden and how it was better to rebel and secede from normal society. The rules of society do not fit to their agenda, and therefore the sects create their own rules. Alma Kartano also became a target for her speeches. 
The Church Council of Huitinen accused Kartano for inciting against the government military service during her sermons. The reason for Alma's rebellion could be that in 1918, during the Finnish Civil War, Alma's little brother fell. There have also been rumors that Alma was to be executed by firing squad. Execution by shooting was one way to execute criminals and traitors in Finland. In Finnish legislation, the death penalty was possible until 1972, but it is believed that Alma's life was saved by a wealthy master, and thus she avoided the death penalty. In 1915, Gardano enrolled in a course that taught a tolerant school teaching in Hamelin. She was aspired to become a deacon first, but her studies were dropped. Later, Gardano acquired the qualification of a primary school teacher and worked as a teacher in several different places. It was not until 1925 that Gardano became a full-time preacher. There is no precise year on the records since the cult began, but it is believed that it was in the 1920s. Alma was not alone in founding the cult, but with her was, in the lack of a better term, the sleep preacher, Tilda Reunonen. The friendship of the women began between 1917 and 1918, when Cardano worked as a teacher in Huittinen. At the same time, it is believed that Adam Harkonnen, another sleep preacher from Mikkeli region, had encouraged Cardano with her preaching career and to tell about the oncoming apocalypse. The same man was also contributing to the beginning of Tilda Reunanen's spiritual career. On one occasion, Harkonnen declared in his sermon that among the crowd was a woman who had same ability as him. It is believed that Reunanen gave her first sleep preaching sermon in 1926. Sleep preaching means that a person in hibernation or sleep passes on godly word. It was believed that when a person is in that state, their own thinking was not hindering the work of God. Tilda's sleep preaches could last for several hours at best. Life in the cult was harsh, and at its best there were 200 people in the cult. The rules of the sect which were really strict, applied to all, apart from the two leaders. Although the people inside the cult were seen better than the disbelievers, outsiders who were called sad, the cult members still had to work hard to please the leaders. It was impossible to not to break the so-called sinful things, because the list of forbidden things was long. The cult was under the Finnish Evangelical Lutheran belief, and they often attended church. In Finland, Evangelical Lutheranism belongs to a religious community, and more than 60% of Finns are members of the church. Evangelical Lutherans live according to the Bible. In the cult of Cardanoism, outsiders, even the priests, under the same religion, were seen as the agents of Satan. However, all the name-calling and sharp opinions were expressed behind their backs, as the cult wanted to be on good terms with the church. Otherwise, the cult had no contact with outsiders, the sinners. The Evangelical Lutheran Church does not have an opinion on premarital sex, but in the cult of Cardanoism it was strictly prohibited and a sin. But so was the sex between spouses. According to the rules of Alma Cardano, the couple was not allowed to marry or have children because the marriage was a fornication blessed by a false authority. Children in the cult were also accused of fornication, as Cardano believed that even primary school children have sex on their mind all the time. 
Alma also felt that the uglier the person was, the better. If the person was good looking, they could attract the devil, meaning that they could attract the opposite sex. Thus, women had to wear vests that flattened their breasts, as well as tie their hair to a bun. Dresses and skirts were supposed to extend below the knees. Lace, hats or handbags were not allowed because they were sinful. The men's tie was called the devil's noose. Every cult member was told to be serious. According to Cartano, Jesus did not smile either. One of the ridiculous rules was that you were not allowed to laugh. Life had to be grey and joyless. Cardano also tried command on people's houses. The houses had to be grey and the decor simple. The residences were not allowed to have radio, TV or toys. After all, they were sinful. Especially movies, dancing, tobacco and alcohol were the worst sins of them all. Reading was not completely forbidden, but Cardano allowed the members to read the Bible, cookbooks, medical books, calendars and John Bunyan classic called The Pilgrim's Progress. Only people with higher status were allowed to read newspapers, otherwise the newspapers were used as a toilet paper. Traveling from one house to another or businesses were done by bike, as driving and motorcycling were not allowed. Only Alma Kartana was allowed to travel by car. There were also foods that were not allowed. Alma saw that eating meat was sinful because there were lust arousing substances in the flesh. Bloody foods, such as bloody pancakes, were forbidden because the soul of the animal lived in its blood. Alma and Tilda, however, ate meat, but only in the company of trusted ones. Sometimes, when Alma got caught eating meat, she justified that she was free from the lusts of fornication, and therefore the rules didn't apply to her. Sometimes Cardano felt it necessary to order cult members to fast in order to kill the lust of the flesh. Fasting was most often a punishment for fornication. Children under 10 years of age had to fast for 3 days. Those over 10 years of age had to fast for 4 days. The fast for adults ranged from 10 to 30 days. If the rules of the cult were violated, the person was punished. Everything was seen as a sin, and if you sinned, you were punished. The cult leaders had different ways of punishing sinners, and children in particular were the ones who were most often punished. Often the punishments were violent, for example, the children were given spankings. The cult had their own punitive ritual called the Stone of God. The convict had to lie on the floor, after which either Tilda or Alma sat or lay down on top of the convict. At worst, Tilda or Alma could lay on top of the person all night and preach for repentance. Levi Koolaitinen, together with the author Ulla Appelsin, published a book in 2010 titled Lapsuus Lahkon Vangina, Levi Koolaitisen Tarina. Levi opened up a lot in the book and the book in question covered a lot of punishments, as well as the treatment of Levi and his sister in the cult. Levi was beaten a lot, and it started when he was four years old, when his mother gave her son to be raised by Alma. According to Cartano, children were sinners from the moment they were born, but at the same time, they were a great way to attract new members to the cult. Children were seen as weapons of God, by which the teachings of the cult were believed to reach as many listeners as possible. Levi also became a child preacher, 
which attract a lot of people from all over Finland. It was considered unusual and miraculous how a four-year-old knew how to preach word of God so prominently. But if Levi made mistakes or skipped preaching, he was punished violently. Levi often was accused of fornication. A photograph in which toddler Levi sat naked on a sheep hide and his hands where on his genitals was an evidence of Levi's fornication. He clearly learned about copulation from an early age. Levi and his sister were accused of incest after they had stayed in outhouse for too long, according to Cortano. Cult member was threatening to drop little Levi from the window headfirst unless he didn't confess his fornication. When the scared boy had confessed, he was punished for this as well. Levi told in a book about the altar blessing, which took place as follows. Alma and Tilda were together in chambers where each blessed, usually a child, went one at a time. Alma greeted them at the door, told them to take off their pants, after which Alma placed the child on the bed where Tilda was lying. Tilda was asleep slash in slumber. Alma then placed Tilda's other hand on the child's head and filled the other hand with the child's genitals. After that the blessing began where Tilda's hands were moving and shaking hard. Tilda recited prayers that had been spoken by the mouth of God. The cult leaders didn't see this as a sexual act, but as a ritual that would kill the child's sexual lusts. There have been clear signs of sexual abuse in some punishments, and these women should have been held responsible for those. Levi was 18 years old when he and his sister Sara finally decided to run away from the cult. It was late summer night in 1949 when Levi and Sara climbed out the window and flew with their bikes. Before fleeing, Levi punctured the tires of the others' bikes to slow their pursuit. The youngster's escape was noticed in the morning. At this point, the siblings had jumped on the train from Keuru to Pori. Their intention was to seek asylum from Lavia, which they managed to obtain. Their experiences were written in the newspapers, and finally the real side of the cult and Alma Cardano began to appear to Finnish citizens. However, the cult members did not let the young people live in peace, and they spread malicious gossip around. They accused Levi of bestiality, and the members took him to the court in 1950. However, in court, Levi had witnesses, and his case was dismissed. The trial had caused a great deal of disagreement among the cult members. They did not expect how Levi's and Sara's departure would change their lives. The descent of the cult began. Alma became seriously ill in 1953 and she laid in bed hoping God would grant her a miraculous healing. Her tongue swelled to such an extent that she could not close her mouth. However, she managed to splutter. I will prove with my martyr's death that I have been right. She did not receive the martyrdom but died of pneumonia in her own bed on December 28, 1953. The death of Alma Cartano was even reported in the national press. Many cult members remembered Alma as a good person with a gift. But the truth was different. After Alma died, her body was transferred in a coffin to outbuilding. However, the lid of the coffin had been left open, and during the night, a rat had been gnawing Alma's face. Because of this, Alma had to be buried 
with branches of myrtle covering her face. Alma's death was a great loss to the cult, and after that the cult began to crack. When Tilda Reunanen, the other leader, finally decided to leave the cult, the sect seemed to dry up. Tilda's departure testified to them that even gods elected can get lost from the path if they let their guard down. Tilda died in 1965. Levi, having been freed from the shackles of the cult, has led a successful life. He has mentioned that the cult taught him to be a hard worker, which he clearly has been during his lifetime. Among other things, he has been a trade consultant and even built his own airport called Tuulikki Vampula Airport, named after his wife Tuulikki. Lev is now retired. It is so strange to study information about a violent cult that had taken place within the borders of Finland. While the cult has shrunk to almost non-existence, there are certainly people, and why not even cults, who subscribe to almost views on things. However, it is admirable how brave Levi and his sister Sara were when they dared to speak out about the cult in the national media. And hopefully, they have inspired and will inspire others to come forward and talk about their traumatic experiences. In Finland, there is Uskontojen uhrien tuki UUTRY, a union to support victims of religions from which it is possible to receive peer support and help.